What's up everyone, this is John B, aka Smooth Eye Chalker here. I'm over at the theater right now to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. I'm so excited to see it. Um, of course I can't show the movie on my phone because, you know, that's against the rules and stuff. But I'll well, come back home and tell you about the movie and give you a review, a review of it Are when I get back. Movie Take care fan? everyone. Alright everyone, so back from CNT MNT Mutant Mayhem, and I gotta say, the movie is pretty damn good. I really enjoyed it. While it may not be at least the perfect movie, it's still pretty much one of the best anime films we've had all year since Mary Brothers and Spy Thirst, actually. So, the story is pretty much about the turtles trying to fit in with humanity, and they were unable to do so because of how they think that the world, like Sarah, has pretty much freaks in nature. And Splinter is the one that kind of wants him to be kind of secluded from the world because after a running that he had back with the, tur the turtles were youngsters, uh, humans around him were just losing their shit basically, and just kind of just saying that he's, you know, he's ugly, he's a he's he's he's, he's a giant rat man and stuff, and trying to pretty much kind of beat the crap out of him and the, and the poor turtles back then too. It was just it, it was heartbreaking back then to see that kind of uh, past scene. Um, one of the things I liked about the film was the art style and how pretty much everything took place at night. And it's a very touching film that talks about how to coincide with other people or other races or other species actually in a sense. That we're all no different than the other. And I really see this movie as like a message of saying that kind of, you know, humans kind of suck for the most part from what we've seen, but going into the movie later on, they actually are more dependable than we could ever have imagined, actually. And, uh, the turtles to me were just... <laughs> to me, they're twerps, but they're freaking fun twerps, I have to say. Now, I grew up with these guys for a long time, ever since back in the original 87 series. You know, I want to see the things that right now, but I don't want to get copyright for it, so I won't do so. <laughs> but yeah, these guys have been pretty much my heart ever since. And uh, seeing them on here again after a long time, I've not seen them for a while. It felt refreshing to see a new take on the TMNT and stuff. And, you know, they, they have different references to things too that we're kind of used to nowadays, like, um, like different celebrities that we uh, hear, sometimes like Adele and Beyonce, I guess. Uh, when it comes to also, um, uh, different things about bacon, egg, and cheese and stuff, and when it comes to, uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then when it comes to, um, look what else, um, when it comes to different songs that we hear in, this, in the movie too, like, uh, Black Street's No Diggity, haven't heard that song in years, yo, that's what's up, man, oh my goodness, you know, a lot of freaking good rap songs and hip-hop songs and R&B songs that we, you know, heard back in the day. And it just felt so good to just kind of go back in time to other eras besides our four favorite Terrapins here. Or Turtles, if you don't know what the Terrapins are. Um, another character in the movie I liked too was April, how to introduce her. And they show her trying to be an upcoming journalist. And now she had stage fright when she was trying to uh, do a... Uh, journalist report for school and let's just say that it didn't blow over too well and she actually um, well, close off they have something written on her locker which was called Puke Girl if you see the movie, you'll see what I mean and they don't hold anything back they just actually just do what they can to prove their point and they prove it they prove it Another part I found kind of funny was when the turtles kept talking about uh, being milked at some point, and I was like, what the hell are you talking about with that? Is that just kind of a freaking joke? But then later on, you know, when the movie goes on, we kind of see what they mean by that, though. You know, unfortunately. Um, I, like, I, I really like to see um, that the villain was not who we kind of expected to be on first glance. So we see back to Stockman, who's not really the enemy actually in this movie, honestly. But he does have some kind of, you know, backstory behind why he felt the way he felt back then before his untimely uh, demise actually earlier in the movie. When he's trying to give, um, when he's trying to take care of his pets or his animals that he's, that he's used to experiment on, like his uh, giant 
flying and stuff, and he has blueprints of the creatures that he wanted to make too, which, funny enough, were enemies that, well, at least some of them were actually made by uh, another character who I'm not going to talk about because it's kind of would be someone that you kind of expect to be in this film, but it's not actually. Matter of fact, get into that. When we get to the post credit scenes, that's what I'm going to say about that. It kind of sets it up. But anyway, so we have a lot of action going on in the first part where you have these, um, you know, uh, highly paid military men or soldiers going in to raid this man to see what kind of stuff he has because they have a certain kind of animals or some kind of mutagen or chemical to experiment with to see just what they could do to use it for themselves and make weapons of their own stuff. And one part is kind of gruesome where one of the guys actually loses an eye to the fly that's pretty much beating all the guys up to try to defend his master basically and goes over his head and just kind of just sucks the freaking eyeball out of him. That's just, oh god. Sheesh. Yeah. Well, we start the film though. And then we get to the turtles and stuff later on and it's just kind of funny as to how they're trying to go on this supposedly cool mission and try to get... <laughs> It's really just to get stuff for Splinter. That's a shopping list, actually. <laughs> Trying to get uh, Cold Ranch Doritos. Personally, well, not the cheese, actually, but that's another story. And then to get um, yogurt and stuff, too. And I kind of found it funny as to how they're trying to go shopping, though, but they're really actually sort of stealing stuff from stores, but very ninja-like, in a sense, so they don't get spotted. So, you know... I don't know about that too much though, but it was kind of funny seeing them trying to make like a ninja vanish kind of thing. So, <laughs> so you gotta see your film, guys. It's it's freaking awesome though. Oh, by the way, uh, also um, remember, go ninja, go ninja, go from TMNT Two Seek of the Ooze. That's in there for a little bit though, but kind of thought that was good to throw back to that um, to that song and movie back then in the year. Um, so yeah, we have also the villains too with Bebop and Rocksteady. Uh, well, actually, to say the least, actually, you got Bebop, Rocksteady, and you have, um, you have Genghis Frog, you have Mambo Gecko, you have Scumbug, you have, uh, what's that other character's name? Uh, Wingnut, uh, Leverhead, uh, and of course, the main boss behind everyone here is, um, he calls himself Superfly, Superfly. <laughs> Voice by Ice Cube, by the way, too. Uh, it would be kind of cool to really see how Roxanne and Bebop could be friends of the Turtle Stone, and, you know, it kind of felt like a chummy moment for everyone, too, when he talks about his plan to try to, uh, you know, do, like, mutant liberation and stuff. I felt like it was kind of like, like, like I was watching X-Men, in a sense. But, uh, yeah. But it's trying to, you know, make like a mutant liberation for everyone that's mutant to be, you know, together and stuff. And to be one against humanity because of the way humanity treat everyone. But he tries to make this kind of machine to like turn other animals into mutated versions of themselves too. And I guess also to like eradicate humanity as well too for all the stuff that he says that he put him through. But the thing I kind of find funny about that is that if this plan were to go without a hitch... He's taken out the very same species, Superfly, I mean. He's taken out the very same species that once cared for him back when he was around at that time. So I find it kind of ironically twisted to do that, but some villains have that kind of mindset too, where they just care about one thing and one thing only, I guess, because, you know, that's what villains usually do. Um, this movie has a lot of heart to it, a lot of charm to it, teaches you about the value of that, you know, when you coincide with other people or other species, in a sense, and as far as the movie is concerned, but being pretty much a part of a, you know, good cultural relationship is a good way to work together to get the job done, in a sense, and to show that not everyone is as different as you think they are, too, and to reach that full potential of yourself, too, to prove that you really are someone worthy of something, despite what people may think of you, and when it comes to the whole story as a whole this movie is freaking awesome you know and the ending you i won't spoil anything so if you're gonna go see this film guys gotta check out for yourself too because a lot of action there's a lot of funny jokes in here too there's a lot of great 
you know, moments, touching moments, it's great. It's great. Animation is great too. And if you're a Toro fan like I am, you'll have a show of a good time. It's <laughs> a good way of putting it. Alright guys, so this has been a review for Team and Team Beauty Mayhem. Let me know what you thought about the movie if you're gonna if you've already you know, seen it or if you're gonna go see it, you know, let me know about what about, about, about that too. Um I do plan to do a review of Barbie too if when I get a chance, because I just haven't had time to go see that film because of work and because of my uh friend that I want to go see it with. She pretty much said the movie was kind of like to her kind of not worth your time, but you know, to to some people Movies could be, you know, something to them, but to others could be something different. Probably thought the movie was not that good to her because it's based on a toy line and stuff too. But usually, you know, that's the inner way of looking at it though. But I'm going to just get the review for Barbie when I get a chance to go see it though. But for TMNT, you may have. Awesome movie. Go check it out, guys. It's in theaters right now. And with that being said, guys, this has been John B., also known as Moon Chocolate here, and take care, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, I also want to say too that this guy followed me home from Build a Bear. <laughs> I just couldn't help it. So, um, it's one of the turtles that they were doing for the movie as well too. I got, as you see, Raphael with the size, and the kind of like side wristies on his um, hands here. And for some reason, his shell is kind of like a backpack on his back here, if you can tell. See the straps here on the sides? I thought that was kind of weird. They're also Velcro too, but I'm not going to take them apart because it just seems kind of too weird for him to be able to have a shell, even though he's an actual turtle and turtles have shells. But whatever. So I got good old Raphael here. I'm planning to get the rest of his brothers too when I get a chance. These are about $36 for each turtle at Build a Bear. And there's also, uh, I think the weapons are about maybe 10 and a half for them. And the pizza slice they come with is also worth about 4 bucks. So if you want to get a gift set or, uh, yourself or for someone you care about and they're turtle fans too like you may be they're here for you guys all right guys take care and have a good show of time mm -hmm.